I so don't consider what I do sort of from the outside in, and I, I don't really ever uh, feel like I can identify a style. I mean, there are things I guess I do. The obvious sort of joke is uh, that I overuse lens flares, and that's sort of what I'm uh, known for, but um, I would say that in, in my approach, the thing that is most important to me uh, is that I love larger than life kind of spectacle moments, but that what's important to me is that the characters are at the center, that emotionally you know where you are uh, and, and, and you're tracking characters uh, that, that are taking you through those spectacular moments. And that to me is the most important thing, that, that balance of the intimacy with the, the spectacle and the sort of hyper-reality. It's a weird thing. I mean, the jobs are all very different. Directing is my favorite because it means that the writing's done, uh, for the most part, and that the producer has done whatever needs to get done to actually get to the place where you're filming something. Um, but they're all critically important roles. A as a writer myself, uh, working on Star Trek was a wonderful thing because, though I wasn't technically a writer on, on those films, uh, I, I got to collaborate with people who had wonderful, great, big ideas, um, but also get to, on the fly, in, you know, every day, adjust scenes and, and make changes that felt right. The actors were often offering moments that were really funny or discovering things that weren't obvious in the, in the scene as written that were great opportunities for uh, continuing to track a character. Um, on Super 8, uh, which frankly I feel like I never quite figured out the script as much as I wish I had, um, the experience of, of doing that movie was so intimate, uh, mostly because we were away for quite a bit of it uh, on a location in, uh, in West Virginia. There were these kids, uh, most of whom had never acted before in a, in a movie. Um, I was doing it with uh, Larry Fong, who was the director of photography, who I'd grown up with. Um, so it was a very kind of, you know, homespun, intimate experience, and that was wonderful. Um, but I also knew as I was directing, we were going to go over budget, and we had to do everything we could to be responsible. So part of me wanted to just keep shooting these scenes, and part of me was like, must leave location so we can be responsible. Um, and it really is just a balance of, of, you know, every day, no matter where I am, uh, as a director, I always feel like it's my money being spent on that set. I don't think like, well, screw it. Well, I want to be responsible. I don't want the studio to get a report and wonder what the hell happened. Um, and so I really do, being responsible in movies is something that's always been very important to me. Um, so even when I'm, you know, when I'm directing something and I know that we might have to go over a little bit and for this scene to work, I'm always thinking, well, what can we do later to make up for that? And it's a constant puzzle. The great thing about television is it, 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 it's all about open-endedness. It's all about the evolution of a story, and, and, and especially on a pilot, the beauty is it's all about promise. So the end of the pilot, the greatest ends of pilots for me are endings that, that promise so much more to come. And that's a kind of wonderful thing. Now, the downside is it's this crazy leap of faith. And you might say, I think I know where this is going to go. But especially in U.S. television, when it's, it's 100 plus episodes, there's no one, I don't care what they say, there's no one who knows exactly how the end of a series is going to play who, when they're writing the pilot. You could have the best idea at the time, but if you're actually making a show, you're going to suddenly cast someone who is absolutely wrong in something. And the thing that you think is going to play out in a certain way won't. It just won't. Or you cast someone who you think, this is a good one episode thing, and they're a genius. And you're like, huge character for the rest of the show. You know, Michael Emerson on Lost. Um, Ben Linus, he was never going to be a character that Damon and I didn't come up with him, but Damon and Carlton Cuse did. They put him in an episode for one episode and were like, holy, this guy's amazing. And he was one of the critical characters for the rest of the series. So I think that television allows for a more kind of free-flowing creativity, whereas films, by their nature, require a, a, a more kind of 
disciplined storytelling where there's there's less opportunity for smaller sort of nuanced scenes that that might not be serving the main story and the main plot and so for that reason I think TV is you know in many cases kind of a more freeing form um, but as someone who grew up desperately loving movies it's it's that to me is the it's always been my favorite format I think one of the, the best uh, pieces of advice was from my dad, uh, who, when I was thinking about going to film school, um, said, it's, it's more important that you go off and learn what to make movies about than how to make movies. And uh, so I ended up going to, you know, leaving my home state and going to a, a different college. And it really did inform uh, my certainly my, my, my storytelling, um, my awareness of, uh, uh, you know, different sort of social circles and, and things I never would have experienced had I stayed in, in, uh, in Los Angeles. Um, and then other advice that I've sort of gotten along the way, um, you know, the, the thing that I think is, it was, it's not as much advice that I was given per se, but what I kind of learned uh, early on is that um, that your voice is as important as anyone else's. Now you may not always be right and you shouldn't be cocky about it, but that there's a kind of, um, I felt like I needed to learn that th the ideas that I had were as good as anyone else's ideas. You know, certainly not, not better and, and I love the collaboration so it wasn't like, I felt like, uh, it was a battle, but it was, it's one of those things I think that, that it's, it's good to be reminded, or if you don't know it at all, be told that that thing that you feel, if, if you really feel it, other people do too. And, and that's something that is uh, to be, you know, mined and to be, to be celebrated. It's funny if you look at kids now making movies, uh, as I did with Super 8 Film, They've got cameras and access to cameras that are often film resolution, uh, professional film resolution, editing equipment that is on par in many ways with what is used professionally, uh, visual effects, uh, color correction software that allows for much of you know, what is being done professionally. So everything's accelerated and resources have sort of become democratized to a point where everyone has access more or less to the tools to make movies. So when people say to me, well, what, what do you, what, what advice do you give? What do you think I should do if I want to make movies? And the amazing answer that was certainly not available to me when I was a kid is make your movie. You can actually make your movie. You know, you can find a friend who's got a Canon 5D Mark II. You look around, you can find people to use as actors and, you know, you just can make your film and it's, people are doing that. And that's the most amazing thing. Because the resources had been so limited for so long, uh, there were a lot of people who would say, God, if I only had access to a camera, I would make a movie. There's a lot of talk about it. I remember when I was in college, I would spend most of my time in my room writing uh, screenplays, um, really bad screenplays. But I was in my room doing that uh, when I probably should have been studying or something. Um, there were a lot of people I remember at parties who would talk about writing and that they wanted to be a writer. But I would always notice that they were out. Every time I would happen to go out, they would always be out. And they, I just know that, that there are people who talk about what they would do if, but they're not actually doing the thing. And so it's a lot easier to actually write a screenplay than you think it is. It might not be good. But most people talk about writing screenplays but don't actually write them. The people who write them, you're already like in you know, the top 10% because you actually have written it.